This is a teacher-facing Kitboard demo, including Family Portal. Um, we'll go ahead and get started, and I'll share my screen. And let's go. Here we go. So here's the app on my phone. So I'm gonna. The way that I'm gonna kind of go through this demo is like everybody just put your teacher hat on. I'm gonna talk about how we collect the data. And the second part of this will be how we use this data as a school to drive school-wide decisions, um, grow school culture and climate. Um, but just for now, kind of put on your, your teacher hat. So this is first grade Bobcats. So this is the screen, this is my default class when I pull up the app on my phone. And so these groups are synced from your student information system. So this information is pulled in from your SIS. These groups will be in here. You can also add uh, additional groups here. And so what I see, so this school has a setup. In the top left corner, you can see that this school uses dollars. Some of our schools choose to do points. Um, everything that you're going to see is completely configurable. Um, and so for this school site, they use school dollars. When I click on Destiny's name, what comes up is this school's behavior matrix. So what we see up top are quick buttons. So these are behaviors that I can quickly touch, click add behavior, it goes straight onto that student's profile. And so these look different from every single school. Every single school will choose what behaviors they wanna use. Um, so these are some of the teacher observe virtual behaviors that we've added just in recent months of some of the ways that schools are using uh, Kickboard during COVID. Um, these are kind of some of like the best use strategies that we've seen. We're always looking for more and trying to reach out to more schools of, you know, like what's working, what, what isn't. Um, so these are all completely configurable, looks different from every school. You can also add a note to all of these. Um, so if I wanted to add a note here, I can add that. It goes straight onto the student's, uh, student's profile. Um, so like when I was teaching, anytime I would set an expectation in my class, right? So it was setting the expectation and then immediately positively narrating. So let's say when students are entering the classroom. Destiny, Les, Deshaun, Kyle, and Mia, great job having you do now on the right side of your desk and being prepared for class. Um, so I just logged behaviors for five students. It took me about three seconds. So let's talk about what that data starts to give you and kind of some insights here. So when I come to Destiny's profile, what I see is Destiny's positivity ratio. And so from year to month to week, we see the ratio of positive interactions to corrective interactions. And so that's a big metric that we use when we're working with schools is trying to look at what is that ratio of times that we've celebrated a student or shouted that student out versus the times that we've corrected that student. Um, and always shooting for at least like a baseline of 75% is kind of what we're going for. So. Down here, I can see all of the behaviors that have been logged for a student for a week. So I can see everything that has happened in the student's week. And up here, what we can see is this notifications. Um, so notifications work in an interesting way. So they are kind of like if then statements that you guys would set up as a school. Um, so this school has said, okay, if a student hits six merits in a week, we want to flag that student for the sh student shout out board. Um, on the corrective side, they have said, okay, if a student is removed from class, then we want to automatically flag that student and I want to flag that so that it starts a restorative circle. And so what's really cool about these flags is that it can send automatic text messages to admin when students get flagged for those groups. So we call those uh, smart groups. And so these are just, again, completely configurable for each school. Um, but so I find this really, really powerful when schools do a lot of thought behind incentives and build those things out so that it is automated and streamlined for students to get shout outs, for students to get lunch with the principal for students to you know, do these positive things. Um, and it takes some of the lift off of teachers to have to keep up with all of those things. 
Um, it just goes directly in here and you have that roster already built out for you. Um, so I'm gonna stop right there and what's gonna, Mike will talk about the parent portal, um, but I'll just stop for quick questions if anybody has any and then what we'll show you guys next is the communication and parent portal piece, but any questions um, up to here. Yeah, I have one quick one. I'm sorry. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, my name is Jeremy. So, um, with the like behaviors, are we able to just like create one on the fly, or do we have to go through, like, if a teacher wanted to create one for their specific class or anything of that nature? That's yeah. That's a great question. So behaviors. Um, so if you're familiar with Class Dojo, Class Dojo kind of like exists on in each classroom this is a school-wide system so if they do create a behavior then it would be creating it for the entire school got it um, but yeah you can create behaviors at any point in time the only thing that you would need our help for is like when you set up those consequences or triggers that i was talking about got you. yeah cool great question any other questions guys all right mike you want to take it away Oh, sorry. I had a quick oh, question. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, is your password uh, for the app the same as what you would have for your Octa, or is it different? You would have to create a different password. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. So it it can be. Um, and Luz, what uh student? I'm totally blanking. What student information system do you guys use? We use Infinite Campus. Okay. Um, and and actually that yeah that's that's a great question about the app. So, um, because of the way that Octa works. Uh, teachers don't, um, so there's not necessarily a password so that, that, that's associated with Kickboard, if that makes sense. Like you have a password and that's associated to your AF account. Uh, so likely what we would need to have, have happen is um, have the person who is the school admin for uh, Endeavor Elementary School um, add those passwords for uh, individual teachers so that they would, if you're planning to use the app, that is. I mean, teachers can also uh, do all of this um, from their, their laptops, but if they wanted to use the app, then likely we would need to add passwords within the Kickboard system. Yeah, and uh, Annika, I use my, um, I have an iPhone and I can just use my thumb. Um, I don't know if that would work to for Okta, but I think once it gets you to the authentication process, uh, once you get to Kickboard, I think you could just do it that way. Good question. Um, okay, cool. Um, I'll shoot it over to Mike if we don't have any other questions. Thanks, Will. So if you want to go ahead and stop your screen sharing, I can yeah. share mine. And can we all see um, the similar screen here? Cool. So when a parent signs in, oops, excuse me here, when a parent signs in, they're gonna be brought to this page. So this is gonna function, look very similarly to what the student profile would look like um, for a teacher. So essentially we're gonna get some basic information, but first things first, if the parent has multiple students, obviously we want them to have access to all those students. So they just click on that students button in the top left. So that'll bring up a list of all their associated students. But in terms of information we have on this page, um, we have, and we also have our messaging feature at the top right there, and I'll get into that in just a second. But we're gonna have just some basic information for the students. So we'll have the student's name, how many points they have today, um, how many points they have this week, this year, if the school is using a bank system, how much they have in the bank. And then we'll also just see some information below us in terms of what behavior was logged, um, the staff member that logged it, when it was logged, um, how much it's worth, and then also any accompanying notes as um, Will was talking about. So this is gonna give hopefully parents um, some insight into how their students are doing and this is all, all going to update live um, so there's no need to push the data to parents at all um, they'll just consistently have access um, to any data log for their students and scrolling up they'll have access to data throughout the whole year so really just building that level of um, connection for families so that they are consistently empowered with information um, around their student 
if a parent was to click on our messaging feature in the top right there. So what's going to bring up is this is going to bring up the available chats um, with different teachers. So each chat with a staff member will create a new thread. One important note here is that parents cannot initiate a conversation. So a staff member, whether it's teacher or admin, will have to initiate the conversation at any time. Um, once it's been initiated, then the parent can reply at any time. Um, we just do that because some schools want to use the portal, but don't necessarily want to get the ball rolling with messaging right away. So by not sending that first message, um, you can control when you're going to roll out that feature. Um, Inside of a message, it's going to look pretty similar to most messaging platforms you've used. Um, you'll have the ability to attach a picture, um, any kind of emoji, if that's something you're interested in. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. Um, notifications will pop up like uh, met from any kind of messaging app, whether it's Facebook, um, WhatsApp, it'll be completely housed in the app. So our messaging tool is not tied to your teacher's phone number. So a lot of schools we notice we're using things like Google Voice um, or even work phones to kind of build that level of privacy for their staff. Um, so we like having the messaging housed in app in that way. And that's about it with messaging. So it's, it's a pretty straightforward feature. Once the family portal is rolled out, you have the ability to access it at any time. But again, if you are not interested in using it in the beginning, you can still use the portal. Just don't send that first message to um, those parents. Does anyone have any questions around um, parent view of the portal or messaging? Hey, did you see the uh, Colleen's message, Mike? Let's just put it in the chat. Ooh, I'm sorry, I did not, Colleen. So what you can do, Colleen, is using, when you're on the page where we're logging behaviors, if I click that group button, as if I was gonna log a behavior for the whole group, I'll have the ability to message that whole group. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna send a message to each parent individually. Um, it's not gonna create a group chat where parents can respond to each other. So that's something we thought was a great feature. Um, and we did want to enable parents and teachers to, um, excuse me, we wanna enable teachers to send messages to multiple parents at once. Right now the limit is 100. So any group um, that has up to 100 kids, you can message at once. Unfortunately, you cannot make calls as of yet. The teachers can create that for their class and it wouldn't have to be the whole school. Yep. So each student would have an activation code. So theoretically, if a teacher wanted to send those activation codes home, they would be able to get their families involved um, in, enrolled in the portal and then could send messages to them. So you can turn it, you turn it on for the school at once. That'll generate access codes for every student. But if you only wanted to do it on a class by class basis, I would just have those teachers send those message, those activation codes um, to only their class. And, and so just to clarify, you, you would have to have uh, their, their class set up as a group within Kickboard in order to send to that group specifically, if that makes sense. I also just wanted to add an additional note because I know that this has come up as a question in the past. Uh, the messaging feature is um, is for families only. In other words, it, it's not possible to message students who are using the portal. Um, so just wanted to, to clarify that. Yeah, that's a really important clarification. <laughs> Thank you, Liz. Yeah. Um, and the one thing I was going to say too, which is just kind of a best practice when I was teaching is you can't make calls on Kickboard, but it is a good place to just log parent communication. So even though you can't make the call within Kickboard, you can uh, make a note that you did make a call home and any of the content that you covered in that, um, in that call, um, just in case. And you can also make that an internal behavior so that only staff sees that and it's never on the parent and family portal, if that makes sense. Do I think the group messaging platform? Um, that's a good question. I haven't seen Remind in the last like year or two. Um, the thing that you, I can't remember if Remind sends actual text messages, but the thing to keep in mind here is that the messaging is internal within Kickboard. Right, so when you're sending a message to families on Kickboard, it's sending it within the Kickboard app, not a text message to their phone. 
So I can't remember if Remind works that way, um, but it's within Kickboard that we're sending messages. So you have to log on to the app in order to get the message. Yeah, and so the families would just see a notification within their Kickboard app. Great, thank you. Yeah, of course. Another thing to keep in mind in terms of comparing uh, Remind and Kickboard is uh, if families are using the family portal actively, then they're also seeing the um, behaviors that are logged for their, for their scholar on, on a daily basis. So they have um, some insight, some additional insight in addition to just the, the messages that they're receiving from, uh, from their scholars, teachers. If that makes sense. Uh, and Jerem, the um, so they can they can ask a question to a teacher, but only if that teacher has opened up that line of communication. Yep. Cool. Any other questions, right there, guys? When does that line of communication reset? Is that daily or once it's open, always open? Yeah, I think Mike. Unless I'm I'm wrong, it's always open. Always be open. It's not going to reset. Yep. You can pull reports from Kickboard, like um, to then transfer into IC. Like for instance, like anything like removals or anything like that. You can pull like a report that will pull the information from like all groups, like all homeroom groups. Um, Luz, I don't know if you're doing that on your end. Um, yeah. So we do have some automated integration that can be set up. Um, I can pull up um, Endeavor Elementary setup at the moment, but so some of the things that can that we can auto pull from uh, Infinite Campus are things like attendance. So any attendance code can be associated with uh, points or with uh, dollar amounts, um, as well as homework. Uh, so as long as teachers are using the missing or incomplete or late flags, then we can also pull that level of detail directly from Infinite Campus. And then the third one is um, uh, suspension data. So in school and out of school suspension data. And um, Luce, I don't know if you, we maybe don't wanna get into this right now, but we did just roll out the referral feature um, within the Kickboard app. So I'm not sure if you guys are still planning on Infinite Campus for that or um, kickboard, but we can come back to that at a later time if you want. But um, that was something also that just got rolled out this week. So I'll just show you where on the app it is. So when I come to Destiny right here, I can come to Destiny's Pro. Sorry. Now my phone wanted to stop working. So if I want to add a referral, I can come here and I just attach it to a behavior that already exists for Destiny. Are you showing us up, uh, on a screen share? Or we, we can't see um, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> totally forgot to start sharing my screen again. There we go. Um, so when I come to Destiny's profile, what I was looking at earlier, um, I can come up here to add referral. Um, and I can add that information right here. Yeah. Um, sorry, go ahead, Luz. Yeah, at, at this time, we at AF would want to continue to record this in Infinite Campus okay. as opposed cool. to in Kickboard. Okay, perfect. Um, all right, guys, I'm going to cruise from the app over to the laptop or desktop version. Um, so this piece right here. Um, so now we'll kind of get it. So this is this is what we were talking about earlier. I can log behaviors here. So it's just a different interface than what we were looking at earlier. Um, I can put in behaviors here. I can see my drop down of all my behaviors. Um, and I can see all of those things here. Um, so the interface is just a little bit different. 